What's up, YouTube? So last week we looked at the wavetable editor within Kilohertz Faceplant. So I want to dive a little bit further into the wavetable editor, and I kind of want to look at creating stuff from scratch as opposed to using samples and stuff like that, like I outlined last week. So yeah, let's dive in and have a look. So, like I outlined, uh, one of the cool things about this is you've got this little pop-up window. So, you can kind of get this to kind of hover anywhere. Let me just check if this is visible. Um, and you've still got control over the actual oscillator module itself while you're editing these uh, frames kind of live on the fly, which is pretty cool. Obviously here, I mean, we've got already a pretty complex waveform loaded. Um, by default. So I want to go ahead and click new and you know completely wipe this slate clean So we've got nothing going on here So there's various ways we can go about this we could either for example use this sine wave editor which gives us the ability to create uh, signs and various harmonics and you know you've got various control over here um, You know one thing that I didn't quite go into in the previous episode is the fact that you can kind of automate these, uh, how can I say, these parameters. So let's say for example here it, I left everything at default and then I selected the last frame and changed this uh, repeat let's say to something like 8. Just so that it's a round number you can see that the you know ends are meeting. So here what we've done is we've basically created this kind of multiple uh, sine waves. So you've got various parameters there, like I said, and you can kind of automate between these parameters um, using this these uh, different frames over here, which is really, really cool. But you're not limited to only doing, obviously, sine waves and repeats of those. Um, if you are wanting to, you know, uh, save this snapshot, then you can click done over here and then you can move on to further editing like for example morph them and do all sorts of interesting stuff like that that's basically the sign editor over here let's go ahead and create a new waveform and i want to look at this freehand and pen tool over here so this obviously you can just draw in you know all sorts of weird shapes. Um, I don't necessarily like this editor so much. Uh, I prefer using this pen tool because this allows you to kind of just draw two points. And now we've basically made a saw wave. But now the problem is that we don't have it on all of our frames. So one quick fix for this is we can just actually go done and then go 256 and quickly draw the saw wave again. Just like that. So now our last frame is a saw wave and our first frame is a saw wave. And then we can just use the morph tool and then what it's going to do is it's going to fill in all the gaps for us. So we can hit done and basically what we've done here is, I mean, you can save this as a kind of like default saw wave kind of uh, wavetable. Uh, that's actually what I'll do. I'll click export. Uh, I believe I've actually done that. So I can just save over this one. It's the same thing, I believe. Um, so here what I want to look at is these uh, spectral filters that are built in here. So, you know, in a previous video, I kind of outlined why I don't think uh, phase plants filters are as lacking as some people kind of criticize them for um, and this is a, another reason is it's got this kind of s spectral filter tool which allows you to filter the uh, sort of harmonics of the waveform itself so let's say for example what have I done here um, let's select the first clip or the first frame, and then open up the filter tool. So then here, what I want to do is, uh, you know, a common uh, sound in Cytrance is the uh, saw wave and bandpass filter. So we can kind of recreate that sound using just a wavetable, you know, an entire filter kind of distortion 
saw sound. So all we need to do is load up the wavetable and cycle through the frames and we've instantly got that kind of sound that we're looking for. So this is a very easy way to do it. Um, load up the filter onto our saw wave and then basically just carve out the uh, frequencies that you want. And as you can see here, you've got like a sort of slope control a lot more than the traditional filter actually has in phase plant. Um, so let's go all the way down to something like this. We can actually boost it up a little bit because we're filtering out quite a lot of those frequencies. Just see, okay, yeah, yeah. So we generally don't want to boost it above that zero over there, but obviously because it kind of combines these frequencies, it, it can create distortions. So I also just watch the tips over here of this little viewfinder. So something like that should be good. And then what we do is we select the last frame and then move the filter over here. So before actually pressing done and writing this, let's play around with the sound and, and tweak this frame to see if we've got a cool kind of, uh, if we've set the limits of our sort of sweep to uh, nice uh, spots. So obviously while you're previewing it, there are these kind of like little clicks and stuff. Um, but then once you actually write it as a wave for a uh, wave table, um, I find it becomes a lot cleaner that way. So here we can actually export this again. Um, let's call this band pass saw. And then this can become like a basis for future sounds. Um, we can actually just load that up in there, um, tweak it a little bit. Um, I might get to that later. But let's look at some of these other effects in here. Maybe we can apply some more effects with a bit of that automation as well. Um, let's just see if this morph tool is going to clean this up a bit. No, it kind of takes away this uh, filter nature of the sound. Maybe some sign FM. So then maybe what we can do is we can automate the frequency as we sweep the frames. So from 0 0.5 or maybe to 1.5. Just to make this you know, more of a complete sound, what we can do is we can go ahead and apply some random modulation uh, to this frames. Maybe put a transcate and a delay.
Awesome. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Let me know what you think in the comments. I'm going to be posting this preset to my Patreon for all my $5 supporters. So if you want to know what that's all about, stick around to the end of the video and check out the link that's going to be on the screen. A big thanks to IDM Mag, proud supporters of the dance music scene and my channel. As always, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. See you guys next time.